welcome to another episode of the Acid Trash Jamboree, where I discuss uh, all manner of oddball music and films. Now in this video, uh, I'll be going through the first of uh, many box sets that I have scattered about the place. Uh, chapter 11 by Robert Turman, uh, who was briefly a member of Non with uh, Boyd Rice in the late 70s, uh, before going solo. Uh, whilst I'd no doubt seen uh, Turman's name about the place uh, beforehand, uh, foolishly it wasn't until I spied a review of uh, this box set a couple of years ago that I actually uh, sat up and uh, took any notice of him. Now, uh, Chapter 11 uh, originally came out as a self-release collection in the late 80s, uh, comprising of recordings made between 1976 and 1987, uh, which were presented uh, chronologically uh, across eight cassettes. Uh, both issues of the uh, original box set are absolutely impossible to find these days, but thankfully uh, Hanson Records have uh, reissued this gem of the underground uh, several times now, uh, most recently in collaboration with the uh, Helicopter label uh, on this uh, Hanson 4CD set uh, that we'll be taking a look at today. So yeah, let's get uh, thoroughly stuck in. So uh, disc one gets underway with uh, the lo-fi uh, split-channel synth dronage of Rotator uh, before moving into ambient, uh, echo guitar territory for a good while. Uh, reminiscent of the work of Gunter Schickert, uh, Manuel Gottsching and of course uh, Robert Fripp and Brian Eno, uh, all of whom were fiddling about with this type of stuff uh, around about the same time in the 70s. Uh, most of these pieces are fairly short and are often rather pretty and melodic actually with uh, clean tone notes uh, sounding like crystal raindrops uh, bouncing around in your ears uh, with just a couple uh, hinting at uglier or more distressed tonalities uh, such as the fuzzy uh, spin effects uh, which are obsessively cycles around a few notes from the uh, pentatonic scale and ES-335 uh, which is named after the make of uh, Gibson guitar and presumably consists of uh, Turman uh, rhythmically uh, hitting the instrument's semi-acoustic body to produce distorted overtones. Uh, the Plunderphonic Tape Warp Experiment USK and the uh, mysterious electronic piece uh, Pipe Dream uh, provides some welcome uh, sonic diversity between the fragments of guitar noodling. Uh, before we hit two uh, minimalist epics, uh, which occupied uh, sides C and D, respectively, of the original tape set. Uh, the first of these, a four-cut jump, uh, offers up uh, harmonic layers of tiny uh, one or two second long loops of unknown origin, uh, which are overlaid with uh, increasingly atonal and disruptive layers of pitch-altered uh, synthesizer chaos. Uh, the whole thing sounding uh, not unlike some uh, blissful Steve Reich or Terry Riley piece being hijacked by Maurizio Bianchi. Uh, then you've got a uh, Lonesome Echo, uh, which is an altogether more uh, sedate and calming affair, uh, with assorted uh, mellow loops of synth, bass and guitar uh, dancing around each other, uh, Turman occasionally uh, stripping the mix back to just its ambient roots uh, before reintroducing the uh, string instruments in assorted uh, configurations. Uh, quite nice stuff, but at 16 minutes, uh, the piece uh, stretches its uh, limited palette of ideas a little bit too thin for my liking. Uh, plus, the uh, louder the bass gets in the mix, uh, the more you notice uh, how out of tune it is with the other loops. Uh, not in a good way. Okay, on to disc two, uh, which opens with a bunch more pieces uh, that feature the guitar prominently. Uh, though these are distinctly uh, more rocking than uh, anything that we've heard so far, uh, featuring bright, ultra fuzzy uh, bar chord punk thrashings and pile ups of uh, snaky single note lines. Uh, oftentimes pushed through uh, psychedelic effects pedals and backed by an uh, ultra primitive drum machine. Uh, or in the case of the uh, opener Novaya Zemlya, uh, by a four-on-the-floor loop of uh, white noise sibilance. Uh, these tracks uh, range from sounding like uh, fantasy outtakes from Noi 75, uh, long-lost uh, metal urban demos, or even the uh, Velvet Underground in full-on eternal music drone mode. 
then following the uh, track Zombie, uh, Terman dials down the distortion and ups the weirdness for a time, uh, playing some bizarre, malnourished form of uh, mutant post-punk uh, with neurotic bass and guitar riffs, uh, twitching away over malfunctioning drum machine spasms. Actually, the further in you get, it becomes clear that a clutch of these tracks are actually remixes or dub versions of ones from earlier in the disc with familiar riffs and motifs popping up before being swallowed up again by waves of sickly effects. Things do eventually calm down in the second half of the disc with Turman offering up a selection of acoustic pieces seemingly inspired by a African folk music and featuring moody, uh, minimal kalimba and xylophone chimings uh, over hypnotic, tape-distorted percussion rhythms. Uh, very nice stuff. Now, the uh, closer on this disc uh, is another epic, uh, which took up another whole side of the original tape box set, uh, Flux, Beginning of End. Uh, this one places the uh, quiet African folk style of the uh, preceding tracks into a loop-heavy, uh, minimalist context, uh, albeit without the percussion and with the kalimba slowed and pitched down so much that it produces an almost uh, soporific effect across its 15-minute uh, runtime. Yeah, lovely stuff, but uh, probably not one to listen to uh, whilst operating any kind of heavy machinery. Over on disc three, uh, we find Flux, End of Beginning, uh, which is also comprised of multiple separate sections and in places uh, has a similar woozy, uh, narcotic atmosphere as its companion piece. Uh, this one, however, uh, is performed entirely on an acoustic piano and, yeah, Turman's uh, melancholic figures uh, inhabit a similar minimalist uh, classical hinterland uh, to some of the great solo works by uh, Hans Joachim Rodelius. Uh, after all this sparseness, it's uh, almost a shock then when the much fuller and busier two-part uh, Spirals of Everlasting Change kicks in. The first portion, uh, subtitled In... Uh, comprises of ebbing, flowing loops, uh, primarily synth loops, uh, which vary in mood uh, minute by minute, uh, from tense and agitated at first to more calming and zen-like, uh, then dark, sour and dissonant, uh, after which point uh, all bets are off. Yeah, the piece then begins to resemble some kind of uh, dreamlike boat ride through uh, multiple ancient cultures uh, with intangible snatches of music uh, drifting in from the shores and coalescing into amorphous tangles of sound uh, with a brief snatch of piano melody uh, towards the end uh, acting as the only uh, concession to regular classifiable music. Uh, the out portion of the piece uh, picks up where in left off uh, now guiding us through uh, endless grey urban wastelands uh, with bleak drones uh, sounding like cold winds blowing through uh, derelict concrete structures and rhythmic loops uh, hammering away relentlessly like rusty factory machinery. So yeah, this is some uh, classic uh, old school industrial in other words. Uh, next up we get Bright Sky, Blue Window uh, which sees Terman return to the uh, pretty... Uh, Rodelius styled uh, pastoral piano wanderings from earlier in the disc, uh, this time drenched in delay, uh, whilst the disc closer, Masking Fish, uh, feeds arcade game esque uh, synth sonorities uh, through some kind of uh, instant Terry Riley filter for 10 heavenly minutes. Finally, uh, disc 4, uh, which comprises of material recorded between 1984 and 1987. Uh, interestingly, uh, the first two pieces here, uh, the only two on the whole of the box set that were recorded outside of uh, California. Uh, instead, uh, Terman actually cut them in Amsterdam. Uh, the opener, Broadcast, uh, it's a fairly danceable industrial piece uh, with a rickety rhythm uh, clanking relentlessly uh, alongside a boneheaded uh, single note synth riff. Uh, also a cacophony of grimy samples grind away over the top. Uh, the whole nine-minute thing sounding a bit like Throbbing Gristle uh, perverting a track from My Life in the Bush of Ghosts by Brian Eno and David Byrne. 
Uh, Radius, uh, on the other hand, uh, takes glitchy fragments of uh, what sounds like uh, calming orchestral music and loops and layers them until they form uh, beautiful, uh, yearning, ambient arcs, uh, which are eerily similar, actually, to certain things from uh, one o Tricks Point Never's uh, modern classic album, uh, Replica, uh, which was released uh, nearly 30 years after this was recorded. Uh, Lower World uh, combines bassy pulses uh, with long washes of almost new agey synth, uh, resembling cluster at their most minimal and sparse. Uh, this piece feels very uh, aquatic and would probably make a nice soundtrack to your next therapy session inside one of those uh, flotation tanks. Uh, Into the Grave is a cool, minimal synth tune uh, with a bit of an oriental atmosphere, whilst the chilled out, thick ice uh, actually sounds like proto-vaporwave to my ears. Then, uh, after a couple of uh, tense, moody electronic pieces, uh, we hit Chapter 11's closer, uh, and also its longest piece, Vice, uh, which clocks in at a whopping 23 minutes. Uh, opening with the uh, ominous, down pitch vocals babbling away, uh, the piece quickly uh, ups the intensity uh, with thick, droning layers of synths and vocal chants uh, stretched out into infinity, uh, before the incessant, chattering vocals uh, re establish themselves in the mix, uh, upping the urban paranoia vibes twentyfold. Yeah, admittedly, uh, Vice does uh, plateau somewhat around the midway mark and doesn't offer up anything revelatory in its closing minutes. Uh, though it's an immersive, uh, industrialised soundscape. Uh, it's still pretty cool. So yeah, overall, uh, this is an excellent collection uh, with a pretty uh, consistent hit rate across, what, four hours and just a handful of pieces that outstay their welcome, uh, which is impressive to say the least. Yeah, ably demonstrates that uh, Turman uh, not only had his finger on the pulse uh, as far back as the 70s, uh, absorbing the freshest sounds from the European avant-garde electronic and rock scenes, uh, but he was also uh, creating innovative music, casually knocking out tunes uh, in styles that wouldn't even be named until decades later. Yeah, I've said it elsewhere on the channel, but... These days, uh, I often prefer to listen to the old guard uh, when it comes to noise and industrial music as their sound palettes are often much more diverse and unpredictable than uh, a lot of modern stuff. Uh, no disrespect to uh, modern noise makers, of course. Uh, I do appreciate a lot of that stuff too. Uh, like I say, it's uh, just a personal preference. Uh, plus, I, I do generally love the degraded, crusty atmosphere of uh, a lot of old cassette and reel-to-reel -reel recordings. Uh, as for the package itself, uh, some liner notes might have been nice. Uh, you know, just to hear something from the man himself about his memories of creating this uh, massive smorgasbord of sounds. But, you know, that's just a small gripe. Uh, otherwise, yeah, this is a lovely set. Uh, though, unfortunately, uh, last time I checked, uh, Chapter 11 is uh, sold out and it's uh, getting pretty expensive. Well, I hope this uh, attempted guide through what is a formidable and sprawling box set has uh, been somewhat useful and interesting. Uh, no doubt as uh, time goes by, uh, I'll be picking out more boxes to analyse. But in the meantime, uh, for more chat about underground and experimental music in general, uh, please take a look around the channel and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Acid Trash Jamboree.